Uh, the first defensive player off the board on Thursday night will be? I'm going to say it will be Will Anderson. Okay. And you think Arizona at three? Arizona, correct. All yep. right. The first offensive lineman off the board Thursday night will be? I'm going to say that will be Paris Johnson. Okay. And you got him going where? Where do you think? Paris Johnson, I think, begins in play. Haven't finalized it yet, but I would say at pick number nine with Chicago is probably where that. Wow. Goes. So they turned down Skoronsky. I mean, we, we were all penciling, uh, if not sharpying, the Northwestern kid to the Bears at nine. But you think if they have their choice of lineman, they choose Paris Johnson first from Ohio um, State. I'm a Peter Skoronsky guy. Yep. I have Skoronsky, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, a pretty good distance between the two, but yep. that seems to be the latest that I'm hearing. Okay. Now. Bijan Robinson's fascinating to me. I mean, talk about a difference maker. He's he's one of your top five overall talents. Number in this three. Draft. Number three, right? So what's yep. his what's his deal? A running back of significance available amongst this entire conversation we've just had. Amazing. There's there's this is a fun draft. One of the reasons why this is a fun draft, Rich, is because. I, you know, we've got a lot of exceptions with players yep. undersized. They don't have the right, you know, some offensive line, maybe don't have the right arm length. Uh, we've got corners that, that, you know, are light. We've got 173 pound receivers. Like this is a, this is a premier, premier prototype player. Um, so that's why the whole running back value thing, I think you've got to rethink that in this particular draft. I have no clue where to put him. I'm leaning towards putting him to Detroit which if Detroit got him with the second pick at 18, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think they win the draft at that point in time. And I also think Brad Holmes, Brad Holmes being with the Rams, watching Jared Goff play with a, at the time, young, fresh Todd Gurley and what that offense looked like. And now you get Brad Holmes and Jared Goff and they get their young, fresh Todd Gurley here with Bijan Robinson. Why wouldn't Atlanta snag him? And I'm trying, I mean, every Falcon fan I know is like, let's go get him. Why not? Right. Why not? Well, and Arthur Smith is is knows what to do with a big time yeah. back coming from Tennessee. Yeah, um, yeah, no, that I, I can I can make a case of why that makes sense. The only thing I would say is that there's a belief when it comes to running back position that getting a great running back on a, on a below average team, you're almost kind of wasting him. If he's going to play for five or six years, you want you know you know you want to build up your team and then drop your running back in as the last thing, so you use all of his carries that matter a little bit more. That's the kind of a league philosophy when it comes to that position right now where's Hendon Hooker winding up and you want to talk about more fascinating you got a fifth quarterback in the equation who might be what if he was yeah. healthy second off the board at the quarterback spot or maybe third I mean but he's not healthy or he's recovering from mm -hmm. an ACL where what, what happens with him do you think I think if you take out if you take the three factors with him that are gonna that are impact him right are the offense he played in, which is kind of that old Baylor offense. It's the age, a little bit older, and then it's the injury. If those you remove those three things, Rich, he'd be my third overall quarterback. I think he'd be a lock to go in the top ten. Um, so I, I've been told recently that Houston has done a lot of late work on him. Mm -hmm. So one of you know one of the theories, if Houston were to go with a defensive player, that Hendon Hooker would uh, would be their choice at twelve. So. I think that's where you know he starts coming into play at that point in time. But then, but then they start their the D'Amico Ryan's era off with the same law firm you mentioned before. What's that law firm again? You said Mills, Keenum, and who? Yeah, what is it, it? It is Mills, Keenum, and Perry. That's yeah. right, Perry. Okay, yeah. Then I don't know that law firm is. I don't know how many uh, cases they, they, they'd win. You well, know, they. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's retainer. a law firm that specializes in. Uh, and in, uh, in, uh, in turnovers, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> nice. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.